So Isaac, Chiminga and Andrea, all season cubists, went to Liverpool to track her down. We've been sent by Cool Cube to get a hot scoop of Linda McCartney. Does anyone know where she is? Hello, I'm doing an interview. Do you know where I'm supposed to go? Linda, Linda McCartney. McCartney! Oh, what a surprise! You gonna show me? Yeah. Come on. Where were you born and brought up? I was born in New York City, and I was brought up about half an hour outside of New York City. Nice, quiet place. Now it's, it's sort of more populated, but when I was a kid, it was nicer. How long have you been a vegetarian, and why did you become one? I've been a vegetarian for about 19, 20 years, and I became a vegetarian when I realized that the leg of lamb I was eating was once a living lamb, and I'm a real animal lover. And I never realized that animals had to be murdered for me to eat them. And once me and my family associated that, we thought, we're not eating them anymore. How did you meet Paul? I met him in a club in London, would you believe? I was, when I, when I was doing photography for a living, I photographed a lot of different pop groups. And when I came to England, some of the English ones that I photographed in New York said, well, when you come to England, look us up. So I photographed a group called The Animals. Have you heard of them? No. Well, see, speaking of animals, it's a good name, isn't it? Um, well, they were popular at the time, and uh, a few of them said, we're going down to hear a singer named Georgie Fame. You probably haven't heard of him either. Do you want to come along? So I said, sure. And I went down, and Paul happened to be there listening to Georgie Fame as well. And our eyes met, and we just started talking and became friends, and that's how we met. Do you have any pets? I have lots of pets. Horses and dogs and chickens and sheep, birds, ducks. I love, I love all animals. Do you have a favourite animal? Probably my favourite is my horse, Lucky Spot. He's, he's an American Indian pony and he's very gentle and very nice. And also I think my dog I love a lot. But I love them all. They're good friends. What made you interested in photography? It was funny. I went to a place in America, a very pretty place, and I had a good friend there, and she said to me, oh, there's a night course in photography at the art center. Why don't you come? And I had a, a daughter at the time, and I wasn't sure if I'd get a babysitter. I said, well, why? She said, well, just come with me. So I went, and there were only about three people in this class, older men, and they were looking at all these beautiful black and white photographs. Do you like photography? Yes. Well, you will after I finish. Anyway, and there were people like, I don't know if you've heard of them, Cartier-Bresson and Ansel Adams. And, and I had been an art history major at school, and I didn't realize photography was so artistic. So I, after this talk, it wasn't really a class, I said to the woman, you know, what do I do now? She said, well, everybody in the class takes a roll of film, and they come back next week. I said, well, I haven't even got a camera. She said, well, borrow one. And I did, and I took a roll of film. And it was black and white film, which I think was important. And I went back and I showed her the pictures and she went, oh, that's very good, you have a good eye. And I never went back to the class, I just started taking pictures. I got interested in it and I loved it, but I never took lessons. I think it's something that you can easily do if you like it. Who's the most interesting person you've ever met? Interesting. Um, that I've ever met? Oh, that's a hard one. I don't know, there are a lot of people I haven't met, like Gandhi and people like that, I think would be very interesting. Um, I don't really know. Maybe Paul. Maybe my children. I, I find a lot of people who aren't even famous are very interesting, you know, just um, people you meet in life who are kind and have good philosophies. Do your children use your cookbooks? They do, actually. A lot. Even my son, who's only 13, he makes great food. He makes great pesto. Have you heard of pesto? That's good, a lot of guys, it's like a spaghetti thing. He loves cooking, yeah. Oh, they use it, they love it. I made it very easy, the cookbook. You could use it. Really, I made it for people who couldn't even boil an egg. And I've made it fun, you know, so it's... Because cooking's fun. Do you think zoos are unfair? I do think zoos are unfair. Because it's like putting something in jail for not doing a crime. But I think if they could make big places and really let animals live well and breed 
not take things out of their own environment. I think it's terrible the way they take these poor animals out of their own countries and out of the wildness and then put them in these cages. It's depressing. But I think if they made nice zoos and, and let's say an already captured animal had babies and it could live well, I don't think it's too bad. I think it's how they treat these animals, really. Safari parks are better, aren't they? They are better, I think, definitely. But I just don't like that idea of taking things out of their own world and putting them in our constricted world. What's your favourite recipe? Um, I was saying I love meatless loaf, tomato soup, vegetable soup. Um, have you heard of a thing called a quiche? Quiche Lorraine. Quiche Lorraine, I like that. Uh, that's a good one in my cookbook. I'm also doing some foods, you know, to try and encourage people to be vegetarian. I'm doing some foods with United Biscuits. I'm doing a veggie burger and a lasagna and a plowman's pasty and a plowman's pie. And, and they all taste like they're meat, but they're not meat. They're made out of soya beans. So in other words, they're healthy for people. In other words, they're, they're, it's all protein and no cholesterol mm -hmm. and no fear. Were there any embarrassing things you'd like to forget? Well, I was talking about one yesterday when, I, when Wings, our first tour, we did like a university tour and we'd show up at a place and we say, hi, we're Wings, can we play for nothing? So they'd announced at the student union that we were playing and there was, we were playing Leeds University. Now, I, when Paul asked me to be in Wings, I said, but I don't sing, I don't play. I love music, though. He said, well, here's middle C, you can learn the piano. Oh. So I learned a bit of piano. And there's one song called Wildlife on, on one of our early albums. And we were playing it at Leeds University, and it starts where I'm on my own playing the piano, and Paul went, oh, one, two, three, one, two, three. And oh, I couldn't remember what I was supposed to play. So he turned around again, and he went, oh, one, two, three. And went, oh. So he came over to show me the chords, and he had forgotten the chords, and we were like, oh, Oh no, and then all of a sudden, like I forgot it, it came back again, and the audience loved it. They thought it was part of the act, you know, that I'd forgotten it, and then we played it, and it was fine, but that was embarrassing. Is there any ambitions you'd like to fulfill? Mainly what I was saying to this young man here, that to help make peace on this earth, you know, help animals. So, Because I, I think that animals, when they die, are full of fear, and then I think people eat this, quote, slab of fear, and I think they become maybe a bit aggressive. So maybe I'm trying to help the animals, but in helping the animals help the people, and then maybe we won't have wars. It's more things like that. There are no, um, I mean, I love my photography, and I like singing, and I love cooking and the family, but I've achieved a lot of things as far as my personal life goes. I think as far as the world goes, there's a lot to achieve. Now, Linda gave us a collection of her books on photography and veggie food to give away as a prize. Now, some of them are signed and they're all lovely books, so get your entries in. And all you have to do is to tell us Linda's name, what it used to be before she married Paul McCartney. What did Linda McCartney's name used to be before she married Paul McCartney? Send your answers to us by post. It's your usual address, Cool Cube, PO Box 321, The Old School, Manchester N60 3AA. And remember, we want to know what Linda McCartney's name was before she married Paul. What Linda McCartney's name was before she married Paul. McCartney, an extremely well-known veggie, is fed up with this attitude, and she's here to show us there's plenty to eat without meat. What, why? J just, just tell us, why are you such a convinced vegetarian? Did something happen to you to, 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 to make you give up meat? Well, I've always been an animal lover, and really it was connecting the fact that an animal had to be killed for us to eat it. So I thought, well, there are other ways to eat. Yeah. I mean, yourself and Paul were looking at the lambs outside your farmhouse in the Mull of Kintyre one day. Were you actually eating lamb at the time? We were eating leg of lamb, and then we were admiring the lambs, and we thought, wait a minute, that leg and that lamb, <laughs> they are one. Oh, hang on, there's something wrong here. All right, so you've spent a lot of time now, many years, perfecting mm -hmm. vegetarian cooking. So much so, in fact, that you've actually you've written, you've written a book about it, home cooking. You've also brought out a range of vegetarian products, which, look, if you look at them over here, they look, that for example, looks exactly like a burger, but it it's isn't. meat. No. What, what is it? It's textured vegetable protein, which is really the meat from soya and wheat. So it's all protein, but yeah. nothing had to be killed. So where does it get the flavor from then? Is it from the herbs and spices that you mix in with it? Well, when you think about it, meat 
doesn't have flavor. We season it, we yeah. make sauces, etc. True. And be very so rude. the flavor, it has different herbs in it. Mm, yeah. But it's, it's very healthy. That's and very tasty. nice. Is it? I'll have a bit. Very, and you've, and you've got the little, so what look like chicken bites, you know, yeah. the, the McDonald's oh, they're, thing. They're not chicken, but they taste like them. Yeah, that, that, and yeah. that's a pasty. We all know it so well in Britain. And again, you've got the textured vegetable protein yeah. in it. I'm not going to eat that because it's so fattening. Mm, that's very nice. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? That's what we call a Italian topper. And it is like chicken or veal, only not animal. And then it has tomato sauce and mozzarella cheese, and it's in Brilliant. a crisp bake. Put it in the oven. It's all very easy. By the way, that's not very fattening. What this pasty? No, it's well, not hasn't it got? Has, it won't have animal fat in no, it. No, it has no animal fat and no gristle. Really? So, so the calories are way down. I have to say, if you told me that was meat, I'd believe you. I'd believe you. Well, that's the funny thing is, people eat this and they go. Come on, this is me. So, yeah. I mean, if, if you have people who are a bit think, well, we don't like veggie food, it's boring, it's bland, mm -hmm. just give them this, don't say anything. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah. right. And okay. it's healthier for you as well. Now, these are some recipes that you've concocted yourself. Right, from, from your book. cookbook. Yeah. What, what are they? That's a beet salad. All very easy. These yeah. cookbooks for people who can't boil an egg. <laughs> That's you me. Do that, yeah. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's up to a point. Up to a point. And stuffed tomatoes. What's, yeah. what's in them? It's just uh, cottage cheese and Thousand Island dressing, which is an American thing, which is mayonnaise and ketchup. Yeah. Mm. And relish and lemon juice, and that's fresh basil. Yeah. And that's a chickpea salad. Oh, much fun. And right. this is something we're having later, a sour this, cream cake. This is a sour cream cake and we're going to eat this later with, with, with coffee. But right. um, so, you, so you'll use... You're not a vegan then? You use no. milk no, and no. things yeah. like that. Yeah. Well, yeah. I, I don't think animals mind giving you, like a chicken doesn't mind giving you an egg, but they say, hey, don't give us... Don't, don't chop my head don't off. Don't chop my head off. And <laughs> a cow the same. We'll give you cheese and butter. Right. And but don't rip the insides out. Absolutely. Okay. All right. Now you're going to do a Susan Brooks and you're going to concoct a salad for us. But only the second time on telly. This is, a, this is the big one. You're going to actually make a salad a for us. Second time. Yes. First time for me. Right. So, well, yeah, second time. Yeah. So this is easy. I'm trying to show you how easy a salad can be. Now, you can either make all the dressing in one bowl like that, or mm. you can mix it up and put it over. I'm going to make it, just put it over. So, okay, this is lettuce, as you can see. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Good this is cheese, uh -huh. like it's just a cheddar cheese. You don't need to put it all in. Easy. Yeah. A few tomatoes. I'm a real peasant cook. I throw it. I use fingers. I yeah. mean, I've washed my hands. <laughs> now, this is a substitute chicken. Tastes like chicken, mm. only it's not. And it, so there's no animal fat. So it's the it's vegetable protein again. Yeah, you it's get your protein in that, and there's no cholesterol, mm. because cholesterol is only found in animals. Yeah. It's good. It's good. Mm, well, wait nice. till mm, I keep put the dressing. Going, yeah. Okay, so this is parsley, which. I don't know if you know it, but herbs have a lot of iron and, and vitamins in them. Mm -hmm. Yes. So I use a lot of them, and that's chives, all fresh, right? Yeah. So then vinegar, pour it over. And that's you, just vinegar? That's just vinegar. Mm. And then oil. So you don't mix oil. the two? You just well, you can do, only I love it like just this. Like, yeah. Just plonked in, basically. Just plonked in, and you yeah. can also use lemon juice, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. which, you know, you can use half vinegar, half lemon juice, easy. And then just salt and pepper. And I've, I've also got mustard. If you're going to use mustard, you usually mix it in the dressing. So right. that looks really nice. It looks it's nice, simple. doesn't it? It looks attractive. Mm. It looks a pretty salad. It as also well as looks healthy. healthy. I'm going to have a go at that later. I'm going to have a burger in a minute. Mix it. Mix it. Mix All right. Thank and you as I that. say, it's not too spicy, and you, you make it to taste. All right. Brilliantly, yes. brilliantly done. Thank you very much. We're we'll going to see you later, later on. Yeah, Absolutely. Yeah. Prepare yourselves for a session, by the way, to go with this, really, uh, with top tipple of Charles Metcalf. He's got a homemade wine to wash down what I think is Paul McCartney's favourite salad, anyway. Cartney, it is true, isn't it, in almost every area that you look at, I mean, certainly the media, I don't know about the pop industry, but, but women are not just getting a raw deal, there's this insidious assumption that people don't even know they're making, that they are talking to a second-class citizen here. Patronising. It's, it's amazing, because we're all going to the same place, you know. Well, I mean, we're all equal, really, you know. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm going to Manchester, I don't know. Where, I mean, you think thinking. boys were brought up by women and men, you know. We're all wonderful. I think we should all join forces and... Have fun. Have a revolution. Are we talking yeah. about the Oxford Book of um, Quotations? Edna O'Brien actually um, said, I was reading this morning, um, that w women should not so much get the vote as we should be armed. <laughs> 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 the vote's no use. We all need army. Um, you've actually, you, you seem to, although you've got a very strong career yourself, obviously as a photographer, you seem to me to, to have always managed to successfully straddle that. We're talking in our phone-in uh, today about the sort of the, 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 balancing, the act. balancing act of being a, a working mother mm. and the guilt it induces. Am I right in saying that you've never actually had nannies or anybody to look after your children? You, you've, you've kept them with you? Yeah. Well, you two know. You've got, what, four kids? You've got four, yeah. yeah. But 
Well, you have to have nannies. We have to have some nannies. Yeah. Well, I love my kids, you know, and I thought, why have them if I'm not going to be with them? And we, we didn't send them away to boarding school. We, we just spend time with them, but that's my priority, being a mother. Yes. And then photography, really, I became a photographer because I loved it, but paid the rent. Absolutely. Yeah. So did you, ever, did you ever feel, when all that was, was starting for you, when, when, you, when you, your family started to expand, that, that you were being pulled in opposite directions, or for you was there no conflict? You, the kids just went along with you? I mean... Yeah, I mean, I'm sort of a peasant person. I'll just bring the kids and people make do, and every, you find people like kids. Some people won't bring their kids to a restaurant, you know, they think, well, yeah. oh, they'll make noise or something, but... You know, we're all humans, and we might as well have fun together. Yeah, and you—I mean, you—you you, you obviously, because you—I mean, your books about cooking and all the rest of it—you obviously enjoy the domestic side of life, mm. and you keep lots of animals. And yeah, I love the domestic side of life, and I—but I believe we're all equal. Mm. Uh, you know, I mean, men and women—we, we all feel pain. We all are trying to get somewhere. We. I think we should encourage each other. But it's funny, isn't it, how, how women, particularly women, can be placed into this sort of box of blame, uh, as, as I think of it in my head. If, if something happens to a man, to the husband, somehow it must be in some way the woman's fault. I mean, a classic example is, is, is when you got together with, with, with Paul, Paul McCartney. Huh. And you went through years of rubbish, not just, just, not just in the press, but actually there was a general sort of pop feeling that, oh, you know, you helped split up the Beatles. Be why? Because you're a woman? I mean, uh, a lot of people say to me, it's just because you're a woman, forget it, it's male doing it. I don't know why. I think a uh, little jealousy and also nobody knew me. I still mm. get it, you know. You, you still get it? I thought well, it was dead years yeah. ago. Well, yeah, no. but it's been... People say you still get it. I say, of course, and I'll always get it. Cause, not just because I'm a woman, you know, it's just easier to knock women, I think. It's, oh, it, yeah, it's also because you're, you're married to a superstar like, like Paul. I mean, I know that, um, I think it was Joanne, New uh, jo Joanne Woodward who has said that uh, being married to a superstar like Paul Newman um, was actually just horrendous. I mean, she, she just, that, that they've got a very good marriage and it, it's stuck together, but there are many sides of it she just can't stand. I mean, do you find that difficult? I'm a big fan of Joanne Woodward, by the way. <laughs> and I think yeah. she's a brilliant actress. And I think she's been smothered a bit because he is she's so big, but she is mm. a brilliant actress. Mm. But, um... I think yeah. what she was saying was that although their relationship was, 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 was perfect, as far as any married relationship can be, um, it was the perception of him versus her. Well, exactly. Well, we haven't really got that. We all know who's, who's <laughs> happening. You know, yeah. I married a musician, a, a very great musician, so I don't mind. I'm not competing, you know. No. But I think as far as she's concerned, she's brilliant, and he's the one everybody knows, and yet, yes. to me, she's... She's my well, favourite, actually. She also manages to, um, and she also said it's really difficult because people do make, women do make approaches, you know, all the time in restaurants. I mean, sometimes with her actually sitting there, mm. you know, they will come up. I think up showbiz, make show, you know, you know, show, yeah. you yeah. know, you get home, you take off your suit, you relax, you're yourself. But when you're out there, if you're famous, people expect you to be... What they, what they see what on the they screen expect. or whatever, did you, yes. did you see, um, in a lot of movies about sort of that kind of thing. Mm. And King of Comedy. Did you mm. see no, that movie? It's that, no. a great movie. Yeah. Anyway, Jerry Lewis is a talk show, very big, and a fan comes up to him and she goes, my son, he's on the phone, will you talk to him? It's very American. Mm. And he goes, no, I haven't got time. And she goes, but I love you, I love you. He loves you. And she goes, we haven't got time, I've got to go to, you should get cancer. You know, in other words, from love to hate. And that's yes. sort of showbiz. Yes. If, if you're feeling bad one day, Somebody says, can I have an autograph? And you're feeling like, oh. Yes. And you go, do you not mind? You know, people hold grudges. Michael G Caine tells a very funny story like that. He, he says he was in Oxford Street going to a restaurant with a girlfriend long before he got married. And a fan came up and said, Michael Caine, can I have your autograph? And he said, well, I'm with my girlfriend having a private dinner. He said, I'll join you. I'll pay for it. Come on, on me. He said, no, really, this is a private do. This went on for a couple of minutes. And finally, Michael Caine said, look, I'm sorry. Can you just please shove off? You know, please. And that guy looked at him and said, well, I was your biggest fan. You and the stream of invective. A very difficult position. It's what was it like for you? to suddenly, and it hadn't almost seemed overnight, to become a pop star with wings. I mean, one minute you're snapping the camera, which right. has never stopped, and then the next minute doing. you're hammering the keyboards in front of, you know, 300,000 well, people. we decided early on we wanted to be together. Because, again, in showbiz, the man's here. You two work together, but mm. if the man's, let's say, doing a film here and the woman's doing it there, so we decided we wanted to be together. Mm. I've never thought to be a singer or a keyboard player, you know. Mm. But Paul just said, well, do you want to get in a group? I went, let's do a group together. I went... I don't really play anything. He said, well, you could play keyboard. Here's middle C. You go <laughs> learn it. Which, so I sort of taught myself. I'm still not a great player, but... 
I'm up there, I've got the spirit. I'm really there for the spirit, I think. I, you strike me as being, you're obviously a very private person. I suspect you're basically a bit shy as well. Very but shy. <laughs> isn't, it, isn't it quite hard then to sort of stand on a stage and um, be a quite an exhibitionist part of a pop group? Yeah, a lot of what I do is a bit, come on, everybody in the crowd. So yeah. if, if they catch me singing out of tune, which they do, <laughs> I'm going like this and everything, so it's not that easy. Yeah. Um, I think when you're rehearsed and you're with people, like we have a really nice bunch in our band, it's, it's fun. I don't feel, I'm more shy talking to you or mm, really, really than yeah. out there. It's sort of, well, let's go for it. Let's have fun. It's a night out. Well, mm -hmm. I suppose there's a kind of invisible barrier, isn't there, between you and the audience? I mean, you know, you're on, for a start, you're on stage, you're on the lights, they're not. Well, no, you, know. you relate to the audience. It's funny, yeah. you know, and they hold, when we were, we just did a, a surprise gig in Cornwall, which was great. You know, we just showed up and played the gig. And at the end of it, you know, my veggie food, which people are going, there was a sign, Linda, we love your toppers. <laughs> you know, so you get all that. It's fun, you know. So. Yeah, I'm talking food. of veggie food, we have got to try this cake. We got Sa sour, 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 cream cream sour cream cake. cake. It's from me. Veggie cookbook. Mm -hmm. That's all right. That's yeah. all right. Uh, veggie cookbook. Right. Mm -hmm. There's See a very nice picture of you on the cover. It's a nice picture, that. that yeah. so why, why do I always have to eat? And I'm always on a diet. Oh. I'm always having to you eat. You need it with your nice. fingers. Yeah. That's like a kind of very light um, Dundee cake, isn't it? With lots of walnut in. Exactly, and, mm. and pecans as well. It tastes very American to me. Is well, a lot of these recipes are American. Yeah. You know, because Americans are, are sort of simple food in America, mm. but very tasty. Do you miss the States? Easy. Do you miss America? Are you, you happy living in England? No, I'm, I'm, I love it here, and I love it there, and we visit. But I don't miss it. I wouldn't want to live there necessarily. I married a Brit. You know. You certainly did. You married mm. a major Brit. And he used Thank to live you. over there. <laughs> right over the river. That's right. That's right. Yeah. This side of the river. <laughs> well, it's lovely to talk to you. I think your cake's delicious. I think all of it's delicious, yeah. actually. Really nice. well. And I hear you're going to do a bit of this cooking when you get some time We off. are, in the summer break. Trina, our floor manager, has promised to bring me in some t textured vegetable protein. So yeah, I shall have a go. easy. <laughs> and the burgers you, the, that are in the frozen yeah. food, you mm. can barbecue them. You can mm. break them up, make bolognese sauce. Mm. It's all easy. I promise we'll do it. We'll tell you how it went. Okay. Good stuff. Thanks a lot. Thank Thanks you very much. Pleasure. Pleasure. Right, after the break, we've got a, a close encounter of the E.T. kind. We're visiting E.T.'s new Hollywood hideout. He's very sweet. Galore Kester's on their record.